Thank you, Arwen. Okay, good morning or good afternoon to some. My name is Johnny Keith, and today's webinar is entitled Writing Effective Audit Observations. Now, this is going to be a somewhat interactive, interactive uh, webinar. There are going to be several slides that I'm going to ask you to uh, decide which of the available write-ups uh, is the best. Uh, what I'd like you to do is just uh, go to the chat box and uh, write down either A, B, C, or D as we go through them, and then we'll discuss the, uh, the answer. There's going to be four particular uh, questions, though, that we're going to need to poll you on. And as we get to those, we'll uh, show you what you need to do on those. And as Alan said, hold the questions until the end so we can make sure that we get through all of the uh, material. And then we can talk directly uh, at that point, and I'll answer any questions uh, that you might have. Okay, again, uh, you've uh, seen my bio, so let's just go on and get started uh, with the uh, with what we're going to do here, because this webinar is going to provide the basic principles for writing effective audit observations. The audit observations represent the end results of weeks of reviews, analysis, interviews, and discussion. It's the most important part of an audit report. It's used to provide important information to management on the area that you reviewed. And more importantly, it provides details to management on significant issues that need to be addressed. How well you communicate that information is critical to getting management's acceptance of your findings and their agreement with your recommendations. And ultimately, this demonstrates the value that you add to the company and enhances your chances for promotion and greater salary increases. Now, a well-written audit observation adds value to your client by providing two things. One, it provides a concise, understandable, and persuasive observation. And two, it also provides management with actionable recommendations. The key to writing an effective audit observation is having a comprehensive, structured process. Now, the Institute of Internal Auditors recommend a process known as the five C's, criteria, condition, cause, consequence, which is the same as the effect, and corrective action, which is the same as the recommendation. This process allows you to present your findings uh, to your reader in a logical, complete, and objective manner, and thus enhances the chances of the client's buy-in and their agreement to your recommendation. Now, this is our agenda for today. We're going to look at the uh, IIA, or the Institute of Internal Auditors Standards on Audit Reports. We're also going to look at the uh, IIA Supplemental Guidance, and the supplemental guidance that we're going to be particularly looking at is, is the uh, audit reports com uh, communicating assurance engagement results. This is where most of the information is going to come from uh, on this particular webinar. Then we're going to look at in detail the criteria, the elements uh, of the write-up criteria, condition, cause, effects, or, or the consequences, observation and recommendation, or the corrective action. Then we're going to look at some... Uh, audit finding headlines, and I, I include this because the headline captures the reader's attention and how well you put that together can have an impact on whether or not they even read it. And then we'll do a recap and a Q&A at that point. Okay, let's get started. The IIA standard 2400 uh, says that an internal auditor must communicate the results of an engagement. And this is, it, it doesn't say uh, by report. Usually it's in the form of a written report. There are some, uh, I've known some cases where they don't do a written report. They'll do it through a PowerPoint. But in most cases, you're going to communicate the results of your engagement through an audit report. Now, the IA standard 2410 talks about the criteria for communicating the results. And in, and in that criteria, it says 
that your report or your communication must have these five things. It must have the audit objective. It must have the audit scope. And then, as, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, as, as warranted, you're going to have, well, you, you're going to have to have the conclusion. And if there are some findings, you're going to have recommendations and an action plan. Now, numbers three, four, and five is where this webinar is going to be focused, okay? So uh, as you will note, though, and I, I, I tell my uh, students that you will note there is no specific requirement for writing up an audit finding, but they do have a recommendation or best practice. That's in their supplemental guidance. The uh, what we're going to look at first. So we're going to look at the audit observation process, and and this is where, as I said, the webinar is going to be focused. The engagement observations and recommendations emerge by a process of comparing the criteria, which is the correct state, with the condition, which is the current state. What's actually being done, whether or not there's a difference. The internal auditor has a foundation on which to build a report or to build a finding or, or to write up a finding. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about that as we go through this. But let's graphically look at the audit observation process. The first thing you're going to be doing is you're going to look at whether or not the condition and the criteria are the same. So as you look at the criteria, and then you go out and do the field work and see, look at the conditions, what they're actually doing. And then you, you uh, raise the question, is, is the condition equal to the criteria? Is what they're doing uh, the same thing as what the criteria calls for? If the answer is yes, then there's basically no finding. If the answer is no, then we've got to do some things. First of all, one of the things we want to do is we want to determine why is it. We want to determine the cause. Why is it that the condition does not uh, equal the criteria? Because uh, what you want to do is you need to know the cause in order to fix the problem. You can't fix it without knowing what the cause is. Then another thing you want to do, another decision you have to make, is that you need to determine whether or not the finding is significant. And this is major. And usually... Uh, the decision on whether or not a finding is significant is based on the auditor's judgment, and it can and the, and the auditor make makes that decision based on a a number of factors, such as it, it, is it a su systemic problem or is it a one-time error, is it a large amount of money, or is it a small amount of money involved. You want to ask the question, is it worth the time of senior management and the board to even look at this? Yeah, and, and this is very important because if you start putting insignificant findings in a report, it diminishes the significant findings. I know I made it a point when I was at MARTA that any time I had an audit finding, I wanted to make sure that management considered it significant enough to take some action on it. So you want to make sure that it is a significant problem before you put it in a report that it is a significant problem. If it wasn't a significant problem, uh, what we would do is what we called a verbal uh, uh, recommendation. And a verbal recommendation is uh, we, we look at the problem, we determine what the cause is, but we keep all of the information in the work papers, we treat it like a, a, a finding, an observation, but we keep the information basically in the work papers and not in the report. We do follow up on it just like it's a regular problem, but if it's not significant enough to go in the report, you don't want to put it there. In most of the cases, when we found these uh, problems that weren't significant, they would usually be fixed before we even finish the audit. But you want to make sure, though, you want to make sure that if you if you have a problem that is significant enough for senior management or board of directors to uh, to look at it, and then as you see by here, uh, once you determine a significant finding, then you make a recommendation, and we're going to get into um, each one of those uh, uh, individually as we go through. Okay, so 
let's look at uh, the supplemental guidance that we're going to be we're going to be using because this is the heart of our webinar, and this comes from the uh, uh, supplemental guidance that's called Audit Reports, Communicating Assurance Engagement Results. Okay, and it says in there that observations and recommendations are based on the following attributes: the criteria, the condition, the cause, effect, observation, and recommendation. We're going to discuss each one of these uh, uh, in detail, okay? So let's look at our first audit observation attribute, and it's the criteria. The criteria says that the criteria is the standards or the measures or the expectations used in making an evaluation and or verification. This is the correct state. The criteria answers the question, what should it be? Now, uh, it, it, it's, this is the objective basis with which to compare with the actual condition. Now, for us and for most auditors, this is the starting point. The IIA requires this. Unless you have adequate criteria, you can't evaluate the controls. Now, we're, we're going to look at the various types of criteria in a moment, but what happens if there's no adequate criteria? Well, the IA pro provides for that. In IA Standard 2210.A, A is for assurance, A3, the engagement objective, it, it, it speaks to this. It says that if the criteria are adequate, internal controls must, use each must use such criteria in the evaluation you don't get uh, uh the, you can't uh you can't as i said before you can't even do the comparison unless you have the criteria so if there's adequate criteria it must be used in comparing it to the condition now if the criteria are not uh are inadequate or if they don't have criteria at all the internal auditor must work with management and or the board to develop appropriate evaluation criteria. There has to be some type of objective criteria that the auditor can use to compare to the actual condition. You cannot use... Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to watch this clip from one of our online meetings. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, stay up to date, and stay compliant. This video was brought to you by GRCTS. We are also known as GRC Training Solutions. And here's a quick information about us and what we do. We conduct many compliance and non-compliance training courses throughout the year, covering some of the most important areas within several industries. Our focus is to provide the best and the most up-to-date classes to our audience. All training modules are designed and facilitated by industry subject matter experts who possess years and years of experience and understand compliance very well. Our customers attend our online classes from all over the world. If you're not available to attend live meeting classes, you can always opt in to get unlimited access to our on-demand or recorded classes. We also provide in-person and face-to-face -face workshops, on-site workshops where our experts will visit your company at your location and train you and your colleagues, LMS trainings, and finally, corporate subscription plans, where you pay a little amount to enjoy unlimited access to our courses. We have monthly, quarterly, and annual subscription plans. Here's our contact information for you. If you're interested in learning in any of these topics, or if you know a colleague or a friend who might benefit from our classes, please contact us or visit our website for more information. It's www.grcts.com. You can always send us an email, support at grcts.com, or just give us a call, 248-233-2049.